to be there in my family left like that. But there are some people that's going to be killed unless we pray for them. Amen. So we just thank God even now, Father, as we stand here in your presence, that you're watching over the whole world. And the United States, our leadership is very strong everywhere. Father, we just pray that you would touch our president, touch commanders and chiefs and those in the military, sector of state. Father, make it that whatever situation they're in, now they make the best uh, decision. You say you turn the heart of the king, whoever you desire. Father, touch his heart tonight. Make sure that he does that which will be good for our future, not just for the present. And Father, we do pray for the Afghanis. We pray for those Americans that will be left there. That, Father, you will touch them in some special way. Those that want to get out, help them get out. Surely there's somebody who want to help them. And we give you praise and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And um, also, we thank God for those watching my live stream. We're not going to be here long with you tonight, but we do have a word. Amen. We want to have a word of teaching tonight. I want to just uh, teach you from a subject of spiritual enlightenment. Spiritual enlightenment. Spiritual enlightenment. You know, I found out over the, especially the last two years, uh, it, you know, not just the, the last two years, but especially the last two years, we have to be enlightened by God. You know, the world can see what is happening. Those that are not saved, they have to have um, someone to tell them what is happening. They have to have read something. Sometimes when you read things, it can be uh, false. Sometimes when you hear things, it can be a lie. And we're living in a time where there's a lot of deception. People just know how to tell lies. They know how to be deceptive. And one of the reasons for that is people are very selfish today. Uh, our world is made to the point at this time that people are trying to take care of themselves. They've been built that way, you know, and they can do something for you, they will, but they basically looking out for self. So we have to be very careful in this world that we can see beyond what is being spoken, what is being read, what is even being seen with the natural eye. For the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. We're going to have to let God let us see what can't be seen, the things that are hidden. You know, even this week as I listen to the politicians and I listen to those who are in positions of authority, it's easy for me to now to see that they're lying. Maybe it's because the Lord has enlightened me to the point where I can just see a lie. I know when I'm hearing a lie. But people, a lot of people don't even know when they're seeing a lie, hearing a lie. And so I found out uh, this day and time that there are so many people, and I said this three years ago, and I, I warned the body of Christ that our leadership, when it comes to our politicians, is very corrupt. And the people know it. That's why the people don't want to listen to them. For some reason, they believe that uh, not to tell you the truth is to keep you calm and keep you stable and to bring security. But people today need truth. They can work with you with truth. And uh, I don't know why men and women think that people can't work with truth, but people want truth. And so, uh, so the message I'm giving you tonight, I want you to really, really open up your eyes and open up your ears to hear what the Lord is saying. Spiritual enlightenment, what is it? It is when by the Spirit of God, one is illuminated. Spiritual enlightenment is when by the Spirit of God, a person is illuminated. That means light shines to them. If they was in a dark place, they would be able to see what's in it. There's a little difference between revelation and enlightenment. If this whole room was dark, Somebody can reveal to me that there are pews or benches in here. They can reveal with me, to me there's an organ in here, that there are speakers in here. Even though I could come in this room and it'd be totally dark, I can have a revelation of what's in this room. Even just like in your house, when you cut all the lights out, 
you know where everything is. I know where my lampstand is. I know where my telephone is if it rings. I know how to, where the door is to go out. I can walk in the dark in my home and get by. I may stumble a little bit, but I'll know more than someone who has not had anything revealed. This is why if a criminal break into your house and it's dark, he don't really know your house, you got the advantage over him because you know where everything is and he does not. That's why if a fire break out in your home, they tell you to know where your exits are. Even walk through your house at night when it's dark, close your eyes and try to get out your front door. They always told us this, and many people don't do it in their homes, but if you never did it, cut your lights out, put a thing around you, and try to get to your front door or your back door, because if you ever in a fire and there's smoke in your house, you're not going to know how to get there. Am I talking to you? And th what kills most people when a fire breaks out in their home is not the fire, it's the smoke. They can't get out because they don't know where nothing is. They say, well, I know where that front door is, but they can't get there because why? They never did a routine uh, thing where they actually acted as though they were walking blindly to the door. Know where your keys are. If you got those kind of doors where you got to unlock them. But every inside house should have a, a boat from the outside. So revelation can be that God can reveal something to you and you can know something, but it does not mean you see anything. When you have enlightenment, it is when the lights come on in this building and the pews that I know is here, the organ that I know is here, I see that organ. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm better able not to maneuver because I have sight, not just have something revealed to me. I, am I talking to you? So spiritual enlightenment is where the Spirit of God illuminates, shine the light of God so that we can see that which is hidden of that which we have not seen in the light. So in other words, enlightenment causes us to see. And this is by the Spirit because the Spirit means this is divine enlightenment. There's a lot of things in the natural you can be enlightened with human knowledge to see. But spiritual enlightenment that I'm talking about is divine light. Where you're able to see through darkness, you're able to see the hidden things, and we're going to go over that tonight. Are you with me? You'll be able to see who God is. I don't know if you know it or not, but God hides himself from the world in the sense that God can reveal who he is by somebody telling somebody, but God will never show himself to the world because they'd be destroyed if they saw him. God is too brilliant. His light is too bright. It's like looking directly at the sun. You cannot actually, with your physical eye, look directly on the sun. Even the rays that's coming from the sun, if you look, you have to be careful or you'll be blinded. Or for a minute, you won't be able to see when you look at something, you have to adjust your eyes. God is so bright. He's glorious. The spiritual enlightenment will also let you see who you are. Man does not know who he is. I told you uh, on Sunday, we got this gender thing going on in our world. Thank God I can see through it. When a woman, when a female does not know she is a man. And when I say that, the world will say, oh, he said a female is a man. Every female is a man. That's why she's called a woman. man. She's taken from man as a real and the difference between her and a male man is she has a womb. If the woman didn't have a womb, you know what a womb is, don't you? If she didn't have a womb, she would be just like me. But God made her with a womb, and he didn't put a womb on me. Amen? So there is no such thing as a person saying, well, I don't want to be a female, I want to be a male. 
You can only be a male if you have what a male has. Y'all mighty quiet. Because man is a species of being. And the only thing that differentiates me from the female is my body. And the only thing differentiates her from me is her body. Externally. But the spirit on the inside is a man. That's why man is different than a beast. You find a male beast and you find a female beast. There's a female elephant, there's a male elephant. But an elephant is not a man. Now, am I talking to you? They are the beast of the field. They have a soul and they have a body, but they do not have a spirit. And that's what makes man different is he's a spirit. Now, I'm giving you something now that's, in, that's revelatory, and yet I see it because why? I've been enlightened with the light of God to know it to be so. So if you listen to the world and the world try to establish your thoughts, you have to be very careful because the world can't see what we see through the divine spirit of God, neither can they know what we know by revelation. This is why I don't understand why the preachers are not the people that the world should be seeking to understand the things that they can never understand, that God has showed it to us many times. Jesus will be with his disciples. He would speak in parables, but when he go back to them, he said, but I will not speak to you in parables, for it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Why? Because you're the kingdom children. Now I'm not talking to you. So when you come to church, I share with you the mysteries, the hidden things. I'm not here to just give you something academically. I'm here to give you something spiritually that'll make you be able to move through life with ease, not be toppled over by lies and deception by men, or men or women that are confused. When you go to your schools and your colleges, there are people that are confused. I don't care how much education they get. I don't care how much the professor has gotten as far as academic knowledge. He does not have revelation knowledge, and neither is he enlightened, except the Spirit of God is in him. Am I talking to you? You can only get it in the house of God. David said one time in his psalm, he said he, said he wondered why the wicked live so long. He said, but when I went into the house of God, I got an understanding. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, and I have that same understanding, amen? Somebody say, God is a good God. Yeah, when you have enlightenment, you will see. You will see, like my eyes, I will see. Nothing's in the dark. I'll see who God is. I'll see who I am. I'll see who you are. I'll see where we are as far as in place and time. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? It's about seeing. Enlightenment is about seeing. I'll see where we are and where I am in place and in time. The Holy Spirit has to enlighten you to that. Yeah. Where are we in the time clock of God? Where are, we, where are you in your time clock with God's purpose in your life? I'm telling you, this is why people go to schools, they go to school for four years, they go, go to get uh, graduate degrees, undergraduate degrees, and they go another two years or whatever. They spend all their life getting knowledge in a school, and they won't go into the Word of God and get knowledge from the Spirit of God. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. The knowledge gonna la that's going to last you for all eternity is the Word. The Bible says, in the world, 1 John, 2nd chapter, okay, 14, right on through 17. And the, it talks about, um, uh, it says, um, love not the world, neither things in the world. But he that loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. See, it hadn't come back to me, amen. And the world passes away in the lust thereof, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the, the, the pride of the life, and the, and the lust of the eyes. It says, the world passeth away, but it says, but he that doeth the will of God. And Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word. 
will last forever. Give me God's education. Give me God's mind. Because that's the mind I can carry into eternity. A lot of stuff you got in your mind ain't going into eternity because it is not everlasting. So how much time should you spend with things that are temporal? I wish I could teach on that, see where we are in place and in time. That's why earlier, when we were dealing with the political arena and I was telling people about uh, Donald Trump as president, I knew where we was in that time. A lot of Christians didn't know where they were. I know where we are now. And I know what God told me where we are now. We're in a critical time, people. Critical. Why? It's not about one man, human. It is about one man called Christ. All of the world systems are, uh, what did I say to you before? They are falling in. God is taking out the things that prop it up. Why? Because man has trust in the things of the world. He had trust in the education system. Y'all look at the education system. It's in shambles right now. They're fighting whether people should even go to school. Kids are behind because they didn't go to school for a year. Teachers not fighting whether they should even show up to school. Teachers are about to be fired. What in the world is about to happen to our educational system? A lot of teachers now moving from the educational system way before the pandemic because why? They were doing so much paperwork, teachers that really wanted to, to build children. They said, it's, it's not enough now. I'm just here with paperwork and paperwork. They couldn't do the job. Your good teachers are gone. They're they reskilling, retooling. Now you got these young folks, you got other folks that ain't never been in the system, don't care about your children, they're making a paycheck. How can I see that? Because there's enlightenment. It's, it's already happening, and, and the pandemic made it worse. Oh my God, what is happening? I tell you, the entertainment system, it's falling in. Our arts, they're falling in, and people can't see it. You know when it started falling in? When they started putting a lot of immorality out there where everybody could see it. The children could see it, the parents could see it, even little babies could see it. When cartoon characters started cussing, right on the TV, and your children was exposed to it, unless you sit down and say, we turn turning my TV off. The devil trying to get to the children. You gotta have enlightenment to know what is happening here. The world is a dark place, but I got the light of God to see through this darkness. The political system, it's gone. I tell you, politicians care nothing about the people. Most of them only care about their name, their fame, their legacy, and what they can do that they say they did it. You know, being a leader, it, tough decisions. People, let me tell you something. Forgetting politics aside, but I remember the time. If there was gonna be a thousand Americans left in Afghanistan, the military went in there and tore up everything they had to get to those people. And they'd let them know, we're ready to die. That's why you go in the military. You go in there to die for your country. Now people don't care about the country as much. The, the people do, but the politicians don't. If an American can't get out, why are you gonna leave them there? Because people care more about themselves, they're over here comfortable, than they do about people that's crying out and saying, I'm here, and they won't let me get through. What kind of country we got now? People, I bleed and I hurt for this. And I'm seeing the demise. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing a president get up. I don't care who it is, Trump, him, anybody. Get up and know they're going to leave these people. And we got the best fighting army force there is. Let me tell you something, if America go through there and go through there for three or four days, I don't care if a thousand get killed, they'll kill so many of them, they'll let them go through there and get the Americans. I'm trying to tell you, they, nobody can stop us if we want to go over there. The Taliban will put their weapons down. They be scared to death, they go in a house somewhere high. We got the best trained army they is in the world. And we about to make sissies out of them. 
about to make sisters out of our military. They don't even want not to train them tough like we used to talk. You go to Paris Island. I remember when I was going to the military, and they said, we're going to Paris Island. Buddy, you better be ready if you're going there. They tell you don't go. It ain't for the weak-hearted. You're going to learn to run. You're going to learn to get stamina. You're going to learn to be in shape. Or you're going home. Now, you better go push a paper somewhere, because I'm telling you something. That meant something for you to carry a rifle, a gun, or you get on the battlefield. Now they tell me, we, gonna, we can't make it so hard because everybody can't pass it. What kind of people we got? It's the same with the school system. We don't want the curriculum to be so tough because some people can't pass it. We dumbing down our people. And the Chinese is, is moving theirs up. 30 years from now, where do you think your country going to be if you do that? They talking about the Taliban army running. That's what will happen with the American army. We don't make them strong and tough. You say, well, somebody might die in basic training. Can I tell you all the truth? Anybody in the military knows people have died in basic training and been dying, but they don't have high numbers. But not because of media, social media. You hear everybody die, and one person die, you know it now. The whole country, oh, you done killed somebody. People been dying in sports. Way before now, you just got social media now. If somebody died, they put it up there. Right. We're going to have a weak country. And then I'd be wondering, why is it you don't hear nothing about America? In the end time, in the book of Earth, it's great and powerful she is. And then you hear nothing about America helping Israel. Once Israel is ravished and, and their, their people, uh, the armies come over and get Israel. America has always been known to protect and defend Israel. Somewhere she's missing. One or two things has happened. Either she's demise or somebody have blowed up something. Somebody have come in here and destroyed us to a point inside. And I always believe something fit to happen inside. You think 9-11 was something. You wait. With all these people coming across the border and everybody politi political. Well, you know, the, the people come. No, you don't want anybody to come across that border. My brother, I'm telling you. I, I said everybody's talking about COVID. COVID, COVID, COVID. All you hear is COVID, COVID, COVID. Get your shot, get your shot. How in the world can you be so concerned about COVID and you bring people across the border that got COVID and you letting them inside of the city? How is this? This is crazy. Our leaders are crazy. Because they political. It's all about politics. Making sure one side don't win over the other side. Where is America when you just do what is right? Them people are gone. We ain't got enough of them no more. Democrat, not Republican. Leadership is terrible. So I said, they can't tell us about COVID they're going to let people in with it. So praise God anyway. Let God enlighten you. Take off your political hats. Take off your culture hats. Take off your, your educational hats where you've been taught and know what the Bible says and find what the Spirit is trying to show you. Listen with an ear and see with the eye of God. Because this day and time, you're going to have to be enlightened. If you're not enlightened, you'll believe everything you're hearing from the South, the West, the North, and the East. It's time to hear from God. Let me tell you where enlightenment begins. It begins with the gospel. Turn over to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Are you there? If you, if you don't have your Bible, just listen. Just listen. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Enlightenment from God begins with the gospel when it comes to the world. You know, the world is those that are lost. At one time, all of us sitting in here were part of the world. We were lost. We had the spirit of the world because we were not born again. God refuses to not allow the world to have light. Remember when Jesus came into the world? He said, I am the light of the world. If a man follow me, he will not walk in darkness, and neither will he stumble. Jesus was the light of God. 
He was the one that had enough illumination to show man what he could not see without God. Are you at 2 Corinthians? Let's start reading at the third verse. Would you read that? But if this gospel, what is gospel? Good news. There's a lot of good news out here, but this good news is specifically about a person. If this good news be hid, it is hid to them that are what? Lost. Now the fourth verse says, in whom the God, liturgy, mean he ain't no God, talking about the devil, of this world has blinded the minds of them that what? There are people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. But the preacher, like myself, must tell people about Jesus, the Christ. Now listen to what it says. They believe not least the light, circle the word light, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Jesus Christ is the express image or likeness of God perfectly. If you want to see God, look at Jesus. Muhammad cannot show you God by looking at him. Jesus is the only man that came in this world for 33 and a half years and sinned not. One time, he never sinned. Muhammad sinned, Abraham sinned, Jacob sinned. Every man on this planet has been born of a woman, has sinned. All men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. One man, God sinned, wrapped himself up in flesh, and that man could show us who God is. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. And our job is to go and share with them the world the gospel, the good news of Jesus. What is the good news of Jesus? That he died on a cross for you. Come on, that's the simplest form. A man died who knew no sin, took his sins upon his own body, took all your sins. Isaiah 53 and 5, 53 and 4. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and the punishment for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. That's Jesus. He shed blood on the cross, meaning without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of forgiveness of sin. His blood causes all of us to be forgiven. I have to tell the whole world, the Taliban, I have to tell the Chinese that all of us have sinned, and it's Jesus' blood is the only thing that washes. Jesus' blood is the only thing going to wash away your sins. You stand before God one day and you say, God, have mercy on me. And God said, I want to have mercy, but you rejected Jesus Christ. He is the mercy seat. He's the sacrifice. That's why I got to, as a preacher, tell everybody about his death. They put him on the cross, but they didn't put him there because he really had sinned. He was accused by evil people. But he was innocent. 33 and a half years, he fulfilled the law of God. The same law of God that calls you guilty. The wages of sin is death. God said in the book of Romans, he said the whole world is guilty before him because the law says that the only way that you can't go and be punished for your sin is if you have had no sin. And when man stands before God, all sinners... Everybody on this world, planet, when they stand for God, God going to put the righteous law up against them. And I tell you, the law is more than 10 commandments. It's 607 commandments. That's what people don't understand. Go to Leviticus. You can't even touch nobody that's dead, because whether you know it or not, everybody's a priest. Everybody on the planet is a priest, whether they know it or not. You came out of Adam. Priests are people that can go to God, represent others. 
Priests are people that can bless people. There's a blessing of the priest and there's a blessing of the king. Adam was like a king. And if you came from the seed of Adam, even though you've fallen, you're a king and a priest. Symbolically. But if you're in Jesus, you've been restored. That's why now you're kings and priests before God, unto God, rightfully righteous. The man going to stand for God one day, and God going to say, you want to come into my heaven? You want to come into my blessed, uh, the blessed kingdom? Okay, uh, have you ever sinned? Oh, man, it's going to be bad, Glenn, when, when God stands. And see, God can show them every sin they've done. And God knows we've sinned many sins. Yes. We've lied, we've cheated, we steal. We didn't say things right, we didn't do things right. We hated some people we shouldn't have hated. You got to pay for that. And God said, I sent Jesus, let him shed his blood so you wouldn't have to stand before me for that. But now when you heard the gospel, you didn't want to come up. Why? You thought it was, it was you too shamed to receive Jesus. You didn't, you, you know God couldn't clean you up except through the blood. So you heard me say it many times. Everybody washing the blood, they got a new slate on life. And a new slate on life means their name has been written in the, the book of life. And so then Jesus asked them, he said, okay. And a lot of people get up there and try to lie right before God. Like the rich young ruler, he said, he ain't never seen, he's lying. He, he must think he's Jesus. Jesus said, okay, he didn't even want to bother with it. If Jesus was not in his flesh, in that body, and he was just talking to God like that, he'd have fell dead right then, lying in front of him. God said, a lie, you don't tear in his sight. The Bible said, flesh cannot, uh, glory, cannot have no glory in the presence of God. So when they tell a lie, because you really, people, when they stand before God, God will be like he was in the Old Testament. Remember the Old Testament? They could only see God in a cloud by day and a fire by night. God ain't no fire, he ain't no cloud. He was covering himself. That's all he was doing. He, he came in symbols. He came in, in, in types, things that could speak of him. Fire means purifying. Cloud means covering. That's what God is. God came in those ways so that man could understand what he could be for man. So God, when God, when, when the world stand before God at the great white throne judgment of God in Revelation 20th chapter, God will be there in a cloud. They ain't never going to see him. They're going to hear a voice speaking out at him. God's going to have Jesus standing right there with him. And then he said, do you know him? So everybody, that's the body of Christ. You know your body. You go home with it. You sleep with it. You walk around with it. If, if I put your arm on me, I know that ain't my arm. I don't been around my arm long enough to know my arm. You might got more hair on your arm than I do. Your skin might be lighter. But I know my arm, it fits. Am I talking to you? Do you know him, Jesus? Jesus said, I don't know him. Work of iniquity. That's what the Bible said. Depart from me. Be gnashing him. People be trembling. Then God said, it's a name, angels. Is a name written in heaven? Does he have citizenship up here? First thing happens to you when you get to say your name get written. Angel, angel called by and said, we don't have his name written down. <laughs> oh, my God, Jesus Christ. That's the end of that. That's the end. You'll be able to say, please, God, please, I received Jesus. Please, I'm sorry. You'll be cast on into the lake of fire. Because you, 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 you can get away with man, but you can't get away with God. God know you had the chance. You come in the church, the preacher said, come on up if you want to be saved. The preacher did everything he could to get you to come to Christ. You sit there like a log somewhere, uh, stump on the log and just said, I don't want it. You rejected Jesus. That's what some of y'all did. Some of y'all rejecting Jesus. I'm going out there and uh, leak a home Saturday. I'm preaching, that's the preaching and the word is going all in them homes. And they sitting around like they got all day. <laughs> they don't want to come. Got my little tin chairs out there. I'm saying Jesus love you, but Jesus got to judge you. Do you want Jesus? The blood will cover you. The blood will cleanse you. God loves you too much to leave you like you are. God can deliver you from drugs, deliver you from alcohol, deliver you from the hands of them. They sitting in the houses. 
My job going to be up one day. My job going to be up. And it's going to be judgment day on them one day. And the thing about it, we praying. Everybody in Lincoln Home said, we can hear you in our homes. We hear you on the block. We hear you all the way in the other neighborhoods. I asked God, I said, let the word just go. Only a few coming up. America's hard. America's hard. If I go to Nigeria and I go into the indigenous places and I go in places never heard the gospel, they'll be running. People walking for miles, 30 miles, just to hear the word of God. Babies on their backs, walking. And then when they get to the tent, they ain't even no chill sitting in, brother. They had to stand up. And they standing up from 6 to 12 in the afternoon. 6 to 6, and they ain't sat down yet. It start raining. They ain't even got no cover to put up the umbrella and stay in the rain to hear the gospel. And what do American people do? Comfortable. Comfortable. But there'll be no excuse when they stand for the judgment seat. Jesus said it'll be more tolerable for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah than for those who saw his works, heard his word, and they rejected it. So that's why my heart, I cried for them. I'm going to be out there this Saturday. Some of them got so now they stand and they, they, they say, I ain't going to go there Saturday because the preacher comes at five. They're going to the mall. That's all right. God going right with them. I tell them too. I tell them. I tell them just like Noah's days when Noah preached all them years. He said, it's going to rain. I'm building an ark. Get in the ark. When I'm, get in before it closes up. They didn't pay Noah no man. They said, oh, foolish man. He would tell them the wickedness had grown. Imaginations of the heart was evil. Come in the ark. God finna destroy all of this wickedness. Come on in. The only salvation you got is to get in the ark. The only salvation people got today is to get in Jesus. God will baptize you into the body. That's the ark today. Are you glad to say? It's a gift from God. Nobody worked to get saved. All you had to do was believe and receive. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the enlightenment. God is shining all around the world telling them about Jesus. He needs more preachers. I wish we could cover every neighborhood. We, we went to the Grand last year. The Grand they're working on, so we went to Lincoln Homes this year. I said, God, give us time to preach it. And we, we're going out. Glenn, we're going out with people that poll that say that the government don't care about them. They're they sick and they, they, some of them on disability. A lot of them, the world has messed, has not done them good. Some of them ain't done themselves good. But God said, if you like that, come to Jesus. You'll have a mansion one day. You'll have good help one day. Go ahead and pay light bill one day. I'm trying to tell them you have to come and don't have to use no money to stay in your mansion. You don't have to pay no rent. Don't have to worry about the electric coming to give you light. We're giving them good news. They're complaining in their homes, but they won't come to Jesus. They think the government going to help them. They're lying in the government. <laughs> they think the school system going to help them. They're lying there too now. The only hope they got is in Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. We see that. Have God shine your light for you to see Jesus. He's the savior of the world from their sins. He's the redeemer of all mankind. He buy you back from sin. He's the male kiss of that priesthood. He's the one that the media can bring you between God and him and bring you on in there in God's presence. He's the only one can do it, sisters and brothers. I cannot go to God like Jesus can. He's the high priest. I had to go through him to get to God. Nobody can get to God outside of him. He's the only mediator between man and God. Amen. All this stuff about praying seven times a day with the Muslim, forget it. Tell the Muslim to go home. Seven times a day and get you nowhere in heaven. Without the blood of Jesus and without the name of Christ, Amen. nobody getting in God's presence. 
I had a guy that jumped out of his car about three weeks ago. Dexter was preaching over there in Lincoln Homes. He said, is this the, the black, um, what do you call it, the black Yahweh's, the black Israelites? That's what he said. I said, I said, the black Israelites, I said, we black. I said, but we, 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 I said, we're Christians. He said, y'all look like the black Israelites. He got, God pulled that man out. Of, he won't drive in another man. He pulled him out of the car. You were there and ran up to the tent. Dexter was preaching. He never sat in his seat. He lifted up his hands like that the whole while Dexter was preaching. And when Dexter got, before Dexter got, he went to the altar and kneeled down on the grass, not, not carpet. He might have been looking for the black Israelites, but he found out about Jesus Christ. And when he heard about Jesus Christ, he gave himself to God. And the thing about it, he was drunk when he came out of the car. God sobered him up, didn't he? Before he left out, he was sober. That's what the gospel of light will do. That's what the gospel would do. I got to go. I'm not going to stay here long today. I just went through one. Got three more to go. Oh, how to be enlightened. But it stuck with the gospel. Let's share the gospel with everybody. All you have to know is about the death, the burial, the rest. That's the foundation of our faith. Ain't no man died for your sins. Ain't no man spent your time in hell. The Bible says Jesus went down into the, to Hades, not Hades, but hell itself, and he spoke to those that were disobedient. You said, what in the world is he speaking to them for? He let them know he was the one that they prophesied that would come. He said, I'm, I've came. He had to let them know that what... Noah was preaching what the preachers and the prophets were preaching it was true he went down in the hell of disobedience and let them know I am the one and then he came out of there and none of them could cross over into paradise where Abraham bosom was Jesus walked right on over there just like that and the Bible says he took those that were captive and he led captivity captive he took them out of paradise and kept them straight to heaven with God with him that's when he ascended he said I'm here the one y'all been looking for, the one you've been believing for, the one that you had faith for. I'm the, I, I'm the Rosa Sharon. I'm the, the male Kessidet priesthood. I am the Jehovah Jireh. I'm all of that. Then he said, y'all ready to go? And when he got ready to go up, the Bible said he ascended up in heaven. The devil tried to stop him, and the Bible said he, he led captivity, kept him. He spoiled principalities and powers. Nobody could stop him. And the Bible says in and, 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 and heaven, it said, all ye gates... <laughs> The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Let the king of glory come in. Jesus coming back to heaven. Heaven lined up all the angels, had their trumpets. He was coming on into heaven with all of those souls that believed in him. I'm giving y'all the picture. Jesus just didn't go up and send to heaven. He's a king. He's God. And then God saw Jesus coming in. He told all the angels, he said, worship him. I declare today he's God. That's what Hebrews 1 and 8 says. God declared him God. He said, let all the angels worship him because they saw God in flesh. They'd never seen God in flesh. And God declared he was God. Now sit by right, my right hand and all authority, all power is yours. So the angels can know you God. You just ain't a man. You are 100% God and 100% man. And right now Jesus is ruling heaven and earth. Not, not the Father. Jesus. And if you read the 15th chapter of the book of, of 1 Corinthians, it said the time going to come that Jesus is going to give up the authority back to the Father when everything is subdued to him. I tell you, it's an interesting book. It's a good book. Truth is all over it. I tell you in the name of Jesus, I'm getting excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you shout about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's coming back, people. He's coming back for you and me. All this tribulation you're going through down here, I don't care how good it is, I don't care how kind of nice car you're driving, nice home you might be in, it might not be in that nice. But Jesus come back for all the saints. The ones that look poor, the ones that look rich. The ones that small and the ones that look great in on earth. Jesus ain't got no partiality against nobody. One's black, the one's white, the one's red, the one's yellow. He ain't got nothing against color. 
Jesus is going to show the world what he thinks about us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you. That's it for tonight. Being enlightened by this spiritual enlightenment. Thank you, there, Jimmy. Well, the word all right tonight? I tell you, we're exciting time. I'm happy about it. Don't let the world bring no fear to you. You want to get the shot, get the shot. You don't want to get the shot, it's your business between you and God. I'm just telling you, I ain't, I ain't pushing nobody to do nothing. That's right. If you don't get what you, you get, if you die without it, if you die with it, you're just dead. You're going on to heaven. Amen. Don't fear even death. You got Jesus, you got life. We need to stop scaring folks, scaring them like the world scaring them. If you save and you get, get whatever you get, cancer, whatever, I'm telling you, that you got life. The Christian never dies. Jesus, he that believeth in me, he shall never die. And he that died and believed in me, he shall forever live. Death is just the passing over us into another dimension of life where we live for eternity in the blessedness of God. Matter of fact, all the Old Testament saints and even myself in the New Testament, I treasure death when it comes. Treasure it. The only thing I want to make sure is that when it comes, that I finish my course. I'm be with God, brother. Let me ask you this. Is it better to be with God or to be with you? This is where all the hell is down here, all the tribulation down here. Church about to run you crazy, wife about to run you crazy, all these divorces down here, all lack of food, lack of this, lack of that. You're going through all types of turmoil and windstorms down here, and you go to heaven, ain't none of that stuff. Paul said it's better to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. <laughs> he said, but you have need for me to be here right now. I ain't afraid of death, however it comes. Don't be crying for me. Bring this body, ain't nothing but a body up here. Nothing but a body. The real man gone. Be with the Lord. Just say, I, I miss him, but I'll see him again if you save you. If you ain't saved, you won't see me. I'm being with God. Amen. 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 God bless you. All right. Anybody having an offering tonight you want to give, you give it to the uh, usher. I'll either put it in the box, box as you're leaving. Uh, in Georgia tonight, look forward to Rama at 11 o'clock tomorrow.